Hey there, I'm back with another stunning My Own Devices Audio Channel video. From my experience, phono preamps are among the least understood and appreciated component in the hi-fi chain. Since digital media became the dominant method of distributing music, phono preamps have become less and less relevant or necessary. By the early 2000s, most manufacturers ceased including RIAA phono circuits inside receivers and amplifiers. But with the current small but significant vinyl resurgence, the need for built-in and external preamps has returned to audio, and manufacturers are more often than not releasing new products which accommodate a turntable connection. So, what does a phono preamp do? I actually made a video a while back where I quickly explain what a phono preamp does. So here goes. When a record disc is cut at the mastering lab, they equalize the signal going from the master recording to the cutting stylus. And by equalize, I mean they greatly reduce the low bass frequencies and boost up the high treble ones. Why? Because if they sent the signal straight from the recording to the disc unequalized, the low bass frequencies would make a groove that is much too wide. And the main reason that's a problem is that a wider groove would also result in a much shorter album because less music would fit on each side of the disc. Why boost the high frequencies? Actually boosting them up and then cutting them back with equalization makes a quieter recording, kind of like Dolby noise reduction on tapes. When you play a record, the electrical signal comes from the minute movements of the stylus vibrating inside the record groove. It creates a very weak electrical signal that travels through the thin wires and the tone arm and the cables to your amplifier. Because the signal is so weak, it needs quite a bit of extra amplification, more than other components. On top of the extra amplification, it also requires opposite equalization that reverts the sound back to the way it was on the original recording. Now, some new turntables have the phono preamps built in, and as I said, receivers and amplifiers often have them included now. And you can also buy an external dedicated unit that can be used with a variety of components. The two primary reasons for getting an external phono preamp are you just got a turntable and started buying records and your current amplifier or AV receiver only has line level inputs. Or you want to upgrade your setup and improve the performance of your record listening experience. My first separate phono preamp was the shit Manny. And for only $129, it was an amazing value and a very competent performer. Now I'm going to skip talking about other entry level models and jump up a few rungs in the upgrade ladder to some better preamps. In this video, I'm going to explore an interesting photo preamp from Kitsune Audio out of Washington State, USA, that was sent to me a few months ago to try out in my systems. The Kitsune LCR1 Mark V is a solid state phono preamp, unlike one that I've tried out before. Firstly, it comes in two separate boxes. One's the power supply, which is the part that plugs into the wall outlet. And the other one handles the sensitive RIAA equalization and amplification of that tiny weak signal from your turntable's cartridge. That's somewhat unusual, isn't it? The, the vast majority of phono preamps I'm familiar with are single box solutions, right? Generally, when an audio component is designed with a separate power supply unit, it's because the engineer wishes to minimize the electromagnetic interference and vibrations from the power supply transformer that could potentially interfere with a very low level signal like the ones that come from a turntable. All the power supply is doing is drawing the AC current from the mains and converting it to DC voltage, then sending it through a cable to the other box so that it has the clean power it needs to do its thing. What makes this phono preamp different and special that it, that it employs an LCR design to perform the equalization. What does that mean? Well, I'm no audio engineer, but from what I've read and can understand, 
In an LCR phone or preamp, the key components are passive rather than active, with a choke inductor, L, capacitors, C, and resistors, R, in series between the active gain stages, kind of like the crossover inside a speaker. The LCR network is designed to provide the necessary equalization and amplification to ensure accurate playback of the recording. The choke inductor is the key element because it offers enhanced noise rejection and potential advantages in signal purity. Theoretically, that does less damage to the signal. Now, damage can mean different things to different people, but proponents of LCR type RIAA correction circuits believe that they sound better, pure and simple. What are the downsides to LCR phono preamps? Well, implementing this circuit presents challenges. It can make them more expensive to manufacture. I've seen them sell for over $15,000. And LCR phono preamps also require a larger case to accommodate the bigger parts inside. Now the Kitsune LCR1 Mark V is their upgraded version of the model by the Taiwanese designer Kevin Valab that started production around 2017 or 18 from what I've surmised. Now Kitsune tuned it by implementing a new R-Core transformer, discrete voltage regulation, upgraded capacitors, and choke, and that along with substan a substantial black aluminum case cosmetic copper accents, and that Fox badge make it the Kinsuni Tuned Edition. For all of that, the LCR-1 Mark V is priced at just under $1,500. If you wish to read more of a detailed description, I'll put a link to their website below. Now, looking closely at the LCR-1 Mark V, the power supply unit has an on-off switch with a brightly lit orange ring around it on the front. And around the back, there's a socket for the power cord and the output power connection where the thick cable goes in. And that connects to the other unit. Now this is where the brains of the LCR1 Mark V reside, where the RIAA equalization is applied to the signal and then amplified. Now the front has a tiny orange LED to indicate it has power. Looking at the back side, we see the RCA sockets and the ground wire thumb screw to connect to a turntable and the RCA outputs. Surprisingly, there are no balanced XLR connections. And then there's the power input connection from the power supply. Now underneath is where the little dip switches reside. You can figure the gain and impedance load switches using a guide sheet. You need to match the settings of your cartridge you're using. Honestly, I don't like this on phono preamps. Lots of manufacturers do it and it just annoys me. But once you set it, I guess you don't need to mess with it very often unless you change cartridges often. My current main setup includes my trusty Lin Sondek LP12 with an Audio-Technica OC9 XML moving coil cartridge. The preamp is an Air Acoustics K5X EMP going into a Carry Audio Design AE25 Superamp DJH model running 6L6 output tubes. Speakers are the revealing Endow Audio Bravura 7.2s that I have in for review, temporarily replacing my MagnaPans. The $500 Parasound Zphono XRM is a terrific value, feature-wise, and nicely made as well. It can, it can accommodate two turntables, one with a moving magnet cartridge and a second with a moving coil. You just need to flick a switch to listen to one or the other. It has a stereo mono switch and a subsonic rumble filter. Unlike the Kitsune Phono Preamp, the gain and load adjustments are conveniently located on the back, not on the underside, as well as a set of balanced XLR connections. What about the sound? It's good and does the job well. It presents the music in a lively, detailed, and punchy manner. In this system, though, its shortcomings became rather apparent. It's a touch edgy and brash in the upper mids, and the vocals and horns were a little nasal to my ears. 
And it was also a tad light with the deeper low frequencies. In a less revealing system, it's quite impressive. I've used it in vintage systems a while back and it worked really nicely. For around the same money, there was the Parks Audio Puffin. Why do I say was? Well, the Puffin was discontinued and replaced by a new model a few months ago. I'll say a little bit more about that later. Now, the Puffin is a digital DSP photo preamp and one of my favorite devices. I made a video about it a few years ago, so I won't go into detail now, but simply put, the Puffin takes the analog signal from your turntable, digitizes it, applies perfect EQ, and if you wish, it also can apply filters and some DSP, and then converts it back to analog and adds gain. I believe the basic Puffin was around $500 with an extra $100 to add digital Toslink or coaxial outputs. To me, the Puffin is clearly superior sounding to the Parasound unit. It's much less harsh and strident with the higher frequencies. It's really well balanced with a smooth mid-range and robust bass. It gives a relaxed, layered, three-dimensional listening experience. And no, it does not sound digital at all. In a few weeks, I'll be making a video about the new Parks Audio Waxwing DSP phono preamp, the replacement for the Puffin. Its functionality is very similar, but it comes in a cool new form factor. Now, because this Puffin has a digital output, a Toslink type, I was tempted to bypass the internal DAC inside which I did soon after acquiring it. For the purposes of this video, I have added a $1,000 SMSL D400EX. This is a fantastic DAC that employs the latest and greatest AKM chipset. Combined, they retail for around the same price as the Kitsune LCR1 Mark V. Okay, so now we're cooking. This combo is simply fantastic. I can use all the adjectives here, articulate, revealing, layered, natural, dynamic, cohesive, deep, subtle, effortless. There aren't enough O's and smooth to describe how it sounded in my system. The Puffin did its thing and the D400EX did the rest exceptionally well. So how does the Kitsune LCR1 Mark V measure up? That's a tough act to follow. Well, it measures up extremely well. It goes toe to toe with the Puffin SMSL combo with all the same superlatives. And to my ears actually digs a bit deeper and reveals more of the recording. It separates and teases out the fine delicate layers of, of instruments better than any of the other models. My friend Ross borrowed it for a couple of weeks and told me he got even better results using it with his step up transformer so tell me what did you think of the uh lcr1 mark V? well the reason i wanted to try it i mean the reviews were were great but i heard it in your system and i said i gotta I gotta hear this in my system if at all possible and uh so in my own system compared to my uh tube phono preamp uh that cost the same amount of money, I found that the, the level of detail was very similar in, in, in sound, but the uh, Kitsune had a little more musical meat on the bones, especially in, in the bass. It just seemed to draw me into the music more. And uh, I told myself, well, you know, I'm always ready to go from something I built to something that's commercially available if, if I hear an improvement in sound. And I'm very tempted to replace my, uh, my tube uh, phono preamp with a Kitsune. Now, what I did was uh, use a Dave Slaggle uh, step-up transformer because I have a moving coil cartridge. 
and went into the uh, moving magnet uh, section of the Kitsune. I then moved it over to my desk system. It has a vintage Rega Planar 3 turntable and an Audio-Technica VM740ML moving magnet cartridge. The amplifier is a restored vintage 1962 H.H. Scott 299C tube integrated amp and the speakers are ProAct Response 2.5 floor standards. And the Scott has become a favorite piece of mine since getting it back from my tech guy, Jim. It makes all the music tracks sound amazing. And with the Kitsune, I'm in heaven listening to albums while sitting at my desk. Ideally, the two boxes should be farther apart to prevent noise from the power supply from bleeding over to the <laughs> equalization and gain circuits, but the positives outweigh the negatives in this arrangement. I've been using this system a lot, going through my record collection, comparing modern reissues to the original copies of albums, yeah, deciding which ones to keep and which ones to sell. And the Kitsune LCR1 Mark V makes it very easy to hear the differences. Hint, overall the OGs are way better. To me, the job of a turntable, a cartridge, a preamp is to extract as much of the information that can be masked that the mastering engineer has cut into the groove of the record and then present it to the listener in a coherent and realistic manner. I want to hear all of the minute subtleties and dramatic dynamic, dynamics that are in the recording. From my experience, the point of moving up the ladder in hi-fi is to get more of all that. And for my months spent with the Kitsune LCR1 Mark V, I can say that it provides all those qualities better than any other preamp that I've used up to this point. This is an outstanding phono preamp. I mean, I've held on to it much longer than I usually do. I really don't want to send it back. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed my presentation. And you know what to do to show appreciation for my efforts, right? So remember to keep on enjoying your own devices. This bonus clip is a crate of duplicate albums that I will be selling. Enjoy!